Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? I'm going to ask you this question, but I need you not to just roll your eyes or belly laugh or any have any like super dismissive type of reaction. Should the Saints trade for Kyler Murray? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to tell you why. This isn't just silly radio guy, plucked from the air, whatever. I mean, okay, maybe it's a little bit of that, but it's not. CBS Sports explored this because... Kyler Murray wants a new contract in Arizona. They don't seem super eager while having this guy on a rookie deal for at least five years to be very proactive in giving him a massive deal before they need to. He's two years into his into his career. So, like, you've got time if you're uh if you're Arizona or three years. You have time if you're Arizona if you want to wait to see a larger sample size. So Kyler Murray's seen a bunch of dudes get broke off. He's seen Josh Allen get his get his bag. He saw Patrick Mahomes get his bag. And he's like, hey, man, where's mine? So if they can't reach a deal, Arizona theoretically could, could trade Kyler Murray. Now, I want to be very clear. I don't think this is going to happen. Number one, I don't think Arizona's going to trade him. But as I often say in free agency, Every front office should consider everything because if you're not, you are being negligent. You have to do your due diligence on any prospect, on any player, on any type of player that could make your team better at any position. Some are going to be far-fetched, but you have to go through that process. When we were talking about Russell Wilson, not many people were talking about Denver initially. The Denver conversation was with Aaron Rodgers. But look at ultimately what happened. Russ goes to Denver. I mean... You have to be willing to explore something in order to make that deal happen, however it'll work. So, just on the premise of need, we've seen the Saints explore everything. They they sure were in the mix for Deshaun Watson. That we surely know that they had conversations about Russell Wilson dating back to last year when Russell Wilson said he would waive his no-trade clause for New Orleans. We obviously know that they signed Jameis Winston. The Saints have brought draft prospects into New Orleans. There was a report today that Matt Corral was visiting the Saints today. I believe Nick Underhill had that earlier today. So the Saints are exploring all possibilities. And if there is a starting quarterback in the NFL who's had success that could be available for trade, you at least have to look at it and explore it. So, and again, to be clear, I don't think it would happen. and I don't want it to happen, but... You'd have to start, okay, what would it cost? And I think you just immediately have to look at a comp, which would be the Russell Wilson deal, which just got done. It, it The comp is no longer even the Matthew Stafford, Jared Goff deal because you've gotten another major quarterback move since then. The Russell Wilson trade was two ones, two twos, a five, and three players. Drew Locke, Noah Fant, and defensive end Shelby Harris. So two ones, two twos, a five, and three players. If you're the Saints, you're basically looking at if you were going to do a deal for Kyler Murray, it would cost you your two ones this year, no doubt. So you wouldn't make a first-round pick again until 2024. It would cost you two twos. You only have this year's. You don't have next year's two because you already moved that pick. So you'd have to go into like the 2024 draft for your your other second round pick potentially I guess a five as well and you have a fifth round pick this year so it could be that and then three players one of them would have to be Jameis Winston you'd have to move Jameis Winston and then what other players would be involved I mean Noah Fant is a starter at tight end and then Shelby Harris is a is a defensive end so what one offensive one defensive starter pick whom it might be not a an not a, a Pro Bowl caliber player, but a starting caliber player. And remember, if you do that, if, you, if you're willing to give up two ones, two twos, a five, and three players, including Jameis Winston, to bring in Kyler Murray, what you're saying is, 
we think if we add that guy today, we're a Super Bowl contender. That's what Denver said. By trading two ones, two twos, a five, Drew Locke, Noah Fant, Shelby Harris. Denver said, we add Russell Wilson of this team, we're a Super Bowl contender today. It's what the Rams said last year. When the Rams said all those picks and Jared Goff to, to Detroit, they said, with Matthew Stafford, we're a Super Bowl contender. And lo and behold, they won the Super Bowl. They were right. They gambled and they won. Denver did that with Peyton Manning and they won. And now they're doing it again with Russell Wilson. But I think there's a much bigger difference between Peyton Manning, Russell Wilson, even Matthew Stafford, who had such a, a long, uh, successful career in Detroit, despite not having the team success because Detroit, and Kyler Murray. At this point in his career, I don't know that I could look at Kyler Murray and say, yeah, he's that guy. Like I waffle right now or vacillate with Kyler Murray to say, okay, is he... Patrick Mahomes? Or is he Kirk Cousins? Y'all, Kirk Cousins in his career as a starter is 59, 59, and 2. I mean, he is... Sp- I mean, that line is splitting his crotch, brother. 59, 59, and 2. He's thrown for a lot of yards. He's won a lot of games. He's also never won anything of significance, and he's lost a lot. Kyler Murray, 22, 23, and 1. He is right on pace. So, is he the guy that you think with a better roster breaks through and becomes Matthew Stafford and wins the Super Bowl? Or is he a guy that is Kirk Cousins in Minnesota, is going to get you into the playoffs every now and again, might win a game, but ultimately bow out and not going to win the big one? And I think the other thing to consider is that if you did a deal for Kyler Murray, you're also you also have to pay him the market market value. I mean, you have to you are going to pay you're giving up that much. You have to pay him market value for a quarterback. You're going to pay Kyler Murray north of thirty million dollars a year. I I'm not interested in that. Not right now. And the other part of the equation is this: What are you more convinced of? Kyler Murray being Patrick Mahomes or Jameis Winston being Drew Brees 2.0, which has a better chance of happening. And I'm not so sure it's not Jameis. Healthy Jameis at 27 years old with all of the weapons around him, healthy Michael Thomas, draft him a wide receiver, Taysom Hill in the Taysom Hill role, not as your backup quarterback. I'm not so sure I wouldn't lean that direction and seeing what Jameis Winston over the next decade could be instead of what might Kyler Murray be at $300 million. Again, CBS Sports put it out there. They ranked the top, and I I guess I I buried this. I probably should have talked about this. CBS Sports ranked or listed 10 destinations for Kyler Murray if the Cardinals trade him. Number one was Panthers. Number two was Eagles. Three was the Saints. Then Texans, Lions, Titans, Steelers, Giants, Falcons. Basically every team that maybe isn't totally settled at quarterback, but they had Saints third on the list. Yet, you at least have to do your due diligence if you're in the front office. You got to explore every possibility, especially if you're talking about a starting quarterback. But with the uncertainty about what Kyler Murray will be in his career, what it would cost to do it, can't see a deal, a deal getting done. I think ultimately he stays in Arizona, by the way. But for me, not. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.